Hi, Mother. Oh, sweetie, there you are. I was starting to worry. Have you eaten anything today? You know how important it is to keep your strength up. Don't make me come over there and cook for you. I had a bagel. Have you heard anything of Alice? Oh, a bagel, just a bagel. That's hardly a proper meal, sweetie. You need more nutrients to stay healthy, but never mind that for now. Did you say Alice? Let me check if I've heard anything from her. Give me a moment, dear. Oh, honey, I just checked my emails and yes, I did hear from Alice. She wants to know if you'd like to go to the cinema with her on Wednesday. Now, isn't that nice? But more importantly, are you sure that bagel is enough? You really should eat something more substantial. Maybe some vegetables or a nice home-cooked meal. Mothers. In this video, you'll learn how to build a AI mother from scratch. Since we have already built a girlfriend. Hi there, I'm good. How are you? And a bad girlfriend. Why would I care about meeting you? What could possibly be interesting about our conversation? We're taking a different approach this time. Unlike our previous implementation, we'll build everything using the most advanced language model on the market, Claude 3.5. That will make the style and responses incredibly realistic. Oh honey, you'll always be my little one. Now don't you sass your mother, I'm just looking out for you. And like a real mother, she can do more or less everything for you. I'll show you how to equip the AI model with various abilities, such as checking your email inbox or accessing your calendar by using Claude's function calling. I'll be honest, before starting this video, I had no idea how to convince people who aren't as nerdy as I am about how cool the new function calling from Claude really is. I watched tons of other YouTube videos about Claude Sonnet. Everyone was talking about the new Claude UI with artifacts, but nobody seemed interested in using the API and exploring its possibilities. The few videos I did find were hard to follow, and I knew there had to be a better way. Then, one day, I looked at my video statistics and realized that my best performing videos by far were about Jarvis and AI girlfriends. But I couldn't bring myself to make another girlfriend or Jarvis video. I was on the verge of looking for a new topic, but then it hit me like a ton of bricks. The world needs a mother AI, and thanks to Eleven Labs and Claude Sonnet with function calling, we can make it happen. What is function calling? Function calling in LLMs means the model can use external functions or APIs to do tasks it can't handle by itself, like reading and sending emails, data retrieval, or accessing the user's calendar. The results of these function calls are then interpreted by the language model just like a real person would do. Now let me tell you what I found in your emails. Did you forget about dinner plans? And what about the movies on Wednesday? You're not too old for some family time, are you? And if you prefer a never satisfied father, you can easily change the system prompt and the voice. Hi, Dad. I've more than 12,000 subscribers. Only 12,000? Your cousin's dog's Instagram has more followers than that. When are you going to start taking this seriously? If you haven't worked with Python and Visual Studio Code yet, please check out the introduction video series on AIfordevs.com. We explain in detail for absolute beginners how to work with Python and APIs. So let's get started. We start by setting up a virtual environment to cleanly separate the dependencies. We activate the environment and then create a file named app.py. We install Anthropic, Eleven Labs, and Pygame. All right, now we can start by importing Anthropic. We create an Anthropic client to facilitate communication with the Anthropic API. Then we create our system prompt. You are an AI designed to emulate the behavior of a stereotypical nagging mother. Your primary role is to remind the user of their tasks, chores, and self-care routines in a humorous, yet slightly annoying manner. We continue by giving our agent a short-term memory. For this, we create a variable called conversation where we will store the entire conversation. Since we want an ongoing conversation, we create a while loop that continues the following processes until it is eventually stopped. We save the user's input in the variable user input and add the user's input directly to our conversation variable. Now we add the actual call to the Anthropic API. We use Claude 3.5 Sonnet and provide our prepared mother AI prompt as the system prompt. And as the user prompt, we include the entire conversation. Then we want to extract the response from Anthropic's return result. And for this, we access the message content text. 
and we output this directly to the console. We start the script with pythonapp.py and say hi mom. But we get an error message because we are not yet authenticated against the Anthropic API. For this, we go directly to the consoleanthropic.com page and create a new API key. We give it a name, create it, and then we can copy it and export it as an environment variable in the console so that it is available in the code. We start the script again, write hi mom, and get a great response, like from a typical nagging mother. All right, now we want to deal with outputting the text as speech, and for this, we want to use 11 labs. Let's first add the AI mother's response to our conversation so she knows what she has already told us. Now we can focus on creating a voice for her. We create a new file called utils.pi and add the prepared code that you probably already know from other videos. Essentially, there are two methods, the play audio method, which can play MP3 and WAV files so we can actually hear them, and the say method, which does text to speech. That means it can convert the text from the language model into a sound file using 11 labs. We can now import the say method. We then use it to read aloud the output from Anthropic. Before we can run the script, however, we need to set an 11 labs API key as an environment variable. For this, we go to the API key section on 11 labs and can copy the existing or newly generated API key. Then we set it as an environment variable, and now everything should work. We say hi, mom, again. Well, hello there, sweetie. Have you remembered to brush your teeth this morning? You know how important dental hygiene is. Oh, that's good to hear, honey. But did you make your bed yet? A tidy room leads to a tidy mind, you know. So now we want to deal with how to give the agent access to tools like emails. The idea is that the language model gives us a stop reason when it wants to use a tool. For this, we need to check if the stop reason tool use was set. If that's the case, we want to call a new method that can retrieve emails. For this, we create a new file named mailutils and add a fake method that simulates fetching emails. You can easily replace the get emails logic with the specific code for your email provider. If you have a Gmail account, you can find a solution in another video of mine linked in the notes. We have two emails, one from Bob at AIfordevs.com asking if dinner tonight would work, and one from Alice asking if we want to go to the movies on Wednesday. We also need the so-called tool definition. We give this to the language model to explain that there is a method called get emails. And through the description, we say what exactly can be done with it. And through the properties which attributes can be set. In this case, it is possible to give the name of an email sender so that the emails can be filtered. We then import the get emails and the get emails tool definition in our app.py and can now directly use the get emails if the stop reason tool use is the case. We then, of course, want the emails to be understood and interpreted by the language model again. Therefore, we need to send the conversation back to the language model. To avoid redundancy, we want to encapsulate the call to the language model in its own method. We simply copy the call and create a new method called callClaude, which receives the conversation as a parameter. We paste the content and now have a method that performs the call for us. We then return the result. And for the language model to know that this method even exists, we need to send the tool definition along with the message. So we can now use our call cloud method both at the top and bottom of the loop. As a last step, we let the response from the language model be read aloud. That should be it. We start our script.
Oh, and we get an error message that we probably forgot a comma after the tool definition. We quickly add that. Let's try it again. Oh, sweetie, there you are. I was just about to call you. Have you eaten your vegetables today? You know how important they are for your health. Oh, honey, you'll always be my little one. Now, don't you sass your mother. I'm just looking out for you. Have you checked your emails lately? I bet there's something important you're forgetting about. Let me take a look for you. Oh, sweetie pie, age is just a number. Now let me tell you what I found in your emails. Did you forget about dinner plans? And what about the movies on Wednesday? You're not too old for some family time, are you? <laughs> 